We're, when we get uh, going here, you know, this is an uh, you know, exciting partnership with uh, LightStep. You know, we're, we're going to talk a little bit about the value of bringing those tools together. And, and I did, I was telling everybody that I'm basically Robin to Ben's uh, Batman. I did not wear my tights to everybody's relief, but uh, Ben, why don't you uh, take it away? I've never been compared to Batman before. I'll take it, I'll take it. Uh, so I'm really here to talk about a couple of things. There's certainly, uh, we want to talk about the Sumo partnership, which we're also pretty excited about. And I also want to set the stage for the way that we think about the space in general. So. This is the vision of microservices. I think everyone understands it. This idea that you have a bunch of independent moving parts uh, that uh, are moving of their own accord, are developed separately, are deployed separately, and then together there's something really beautiful and elegant. This is, a, of course, a picture of a murmuration of starlings, and it can be um, a really nice vision. This is what everyone's going after. I think the reality of microservices is often more like this, where you um, feel a bit out of control, there's a lack of visibility that comes along with this uh, decoupling of logic from service to service and from team to team. And this operational pain uh, is more than just observability, which is what we're talking about today. It also touches on uh, you know, service discovery, security, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there's lots of pain points with microservices. Um, uh, there are good reasons people do microservices. I think we had a blog post from uh, Vijay Gill, who's a SVP at Databricks right now, about the only good reason to move to microservices, which is the reason most people move, which is actually not about engineering as a computer science discipline, but more about engineering from a managerial standpoint. The issue with microservices is that you have hundreds of developers that are all trying to accomplish a common goal. And to have more than 10 or 12 of them working on a single project team is sort of insane from a communication standpoint. The reason microservices make sense is that you really have to have um, a minimum of human communication between engineers if you want to move effectively. And so microservices allow you to develop and deploy components uh, uh, with a lot of fluidity and independence. So this is the reason why people move to microservices in the first place. Um, as I was saying on the, on the previous slide, there are a lot of pain points. Um, I, uh, yeah, the, really the issue is that microservices resemble your org chart. You're going to ship your org chart is what Vijay was saying. I think that's exactly right. Um, uh, there are, uh, I think it's, this talk is mainly about observability and making sense of these things from a monitoring standpoint. I do want to give a little intro to the idea of tracing for people who aren't super familiar with it. Um, this is a, kind of how microservice transactions end up feeling in practice. It's very confusing, multifaceted, complex, surprising, et cetera. Uh, this is my favorite tweet of all time. Uh, we replaced our monolith with microservices so that every outage could be more like a murder mystery. This is the basic <laughs> feeling I think people have when they're trying to understand what's going on in production with microservices. This is not a difficult thing to understand when you start thinking about it. Uh, you know, I'll give you another slide that's a little bit more uh, engineering-y. So really what we're trying to do with any kind of observ observability or monitoring is to tell stories that human beings can understand. And the storytelling used to be fairly simple. You had your monolith, it was broken into package boundaries, um, and if a transaction came in, oh yeah, and then when you move to microservices, more, more or less these packages become services where each team is monitoring. Um, does this have a little laser thing? Yeah, I think so, top. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, each team uh, manages and deploys their own service. Um, if you wanted to measure a transaction in a monolith, it, I'm not saying it's easy, but it was a matter of following a single uh, flow of control across function, function calls, which is something that we've been doing since you know, 1968 or whatever it was. And so this is like a well-understood problem. Um, you still need to do this in microservices. It's not like an optional thing. You do literally need to do this, or you're going to be like that tweet in the last slide. And this is... Um, uh, uh, how you tell stories in distributed systems with microservices. You need to follow a transaction across process boundaries. Um, it's also uh, not just distributed, but concurrent. So I think the way that my feeble brain tends to think about things as an engineer is that each transaction operates serially. Um, in practice, uh, transactions actually happen at the same time, so they're overlapping. Um, and they're usually asynchronous, so you're waiting on I.O., you're forking, you're joining, that sort of stuff. And then when you throw microservices into the mix, 
um, that are async, concurrent, and distributed. And you need to be able to tell a story about a single transaction. Uh, this is also a very difficult problem. Um, distributed tracing is essentially the way to do this and to do this. Um, if it wasn't for the concurrency and the parallelism and the distribution, it wouldn't be that hard. But you have to deal with all three of those things and even ordinary microservices. And it is actually a pretty difficult problem that requires uh, a new type of uh, technology as part of your observability stack. Um, so the basic idea is consider all requests from all services, connect the dots uh, across services on a per transaction basis, and then sort of you know profit, derive insights. Um, this three is, I think one and two have been talked about a lot. I hope people who are bothering to attend this know a little bit about that, and that's I hopefully a somewhat review, or at least it made sense. Three is, I think, totally greenfield. Um, the types of insights that we derive as an industry right now are very primitive. If you're only looking at um, a single waterfall diagram for a small sample of traces, uh, that's probably not solving a lot of the problems this data could ultimately solve. And the sorts of insights that we want to be deriving as an industry are much more profound and actionable than those individual randomly sampled traces. And so we'll be talking about that uh, later with this integration, which I think is actually pretty exciting and, and somewhat unprecedented in some ways. So um, this is a, a, a visualization of a single transaction. I'm putting this on the screen just so we're on the same page about vo vocabulary. So what you see here is not that different than what you might see in like the Chrome Network Inspector. Each of these rectangles is a single uh, time span within some larger transaction. Um, what's different is that we also have this hierarchy on the left, which allows us to understand uh, which transaction caused which other transaction. Um, so each one of these things is, uh, is a single timed event within a single service. Um, up here, at least within LightStep, we also summarize this potentially very lengthy timing diagram uh, to, to, jump, uh, to, to focus on the critical path, which is the part of the transaction that's actually slowing you down from an end user standpoint. Um, this is important in that a lot of LightStep's customers, these traces regularly have thousands of spans in them. So you don't want to go through and scroll through it. You want to jump to the bottleneck, which is what the critical path does. Uh, we also have tags up here. Um, if you're used to using a metrics, a conventional metric system, I think in some ways what Sumo is doing is a lot more flexible in this regard, but you often have caveats around cardinality of tags. The tags in a trace um, should be able to identify individual customers or um, geographic regions or what have you. Um, we also have a bunch of um, uh, uh, what we call like a microlog. Um, internally, the idea that you have logging events that are tied to the specific span of a specific transaction that are very, very fine-grained. Um, and, uh, and, oh yeah, and so this is sort of an anatomy of a trace. And again, this whole thing is hierarchical and describes a single transaction from mobile and web all the way through uh, a bunch of microservices. Um, I'm going to pause for a second. And I just want to get a sort of a rough sense. Are people kind of with me? Is this making sense? Okay, I'm going to hope that the people who aren't nodding are at least not super confused. Um, but I've basically laid out everything about tracing as an idea at this point, and now we can get into talking about the problem. So um, uh, tracing has a fatal flaw. Uh, the fatal flaw for tracing basically boils down to sampling. And this is, um, I, I was on the team at Google that built Dapper, which is Google's distributed tracing system. Um, the, the basic problem is pretty simple. Um, we have this diagram from earlier. There are a lot of touch points here. And if you're measuring um, every single time, every transaction touches every service, uh, it's just a lot of data. There's nothing to it. It's just the number of transactions times services times the cost of network storage uh, times the number of weeks that you might want to retain this data it ends up being too much. Um, this is the same reason why you can't take this level of data and just shove it into a centralized logging system. Um, it's not about pricing. It's just about the laws of nature. It's just too much data. Um, and that's a really important thing for people to understand. It's not possible to do distributed tracing at scale, centralize all of it, and keep it. Um, that doesn't work, uh, just from a costing standpoint. It would cost millions of dollars a week for a lot of LightSteps customers to do that with, you know, conventional uh, conventional systems. 
Um, so this is how we solved it in Dapper. Um, we sampled, and so we sampled really aggressively. Uh, we only actually retained one out of a thousand transactions, and that decision was made before the transaction even began. This is the way that most um, APMs that do some sort of tracing, this is what they do. They have to make a sampling decision as soon as the transaction begins, which is to say before you know if it's slow, before you know if there's an error, before if you know it affected a particular customer, you don't have any of that information when you make the sampling decision. And so it ends up being pretty limiting. Um, uh, Lightstep, uh, if you want to go to our booth, it's like literally right behind the stage, but you can, I'm not going to give the full pitch, but the basic idea is that we don't do it that way. We actually do retain 100% of the data in what we call our satellites, and this platform allows us to sample retroactively. We can look back in time for a short window, and with the Sumo logic integration, what it allows us to do is when there are errors that Sumo detects, um, and that are visible in dashboards in Sumo, Lightstep is notified and will assemble transaction traces retroactively that explain the sorts of anomalies we see in Sumo dashboards. And that's a, a really powerful thing for anyone who's a Sumo customer and is considering tracing. Um, in Lightstep, that graph from before is a bit different. We keep 100% of the data into regional storage in our own satellites, and then all trace assembly and sampling is done retroactively and, ba and informed by um, business needs, basically. And, th and that's a very different approach to tracing, and that's why Lightstep's platform is a bit unusual. Um, and I think I'm pretty much done with my spiel. I'll give, hand it over to Ben to talk about the integration in SEMO. All right, so uh, I guess the Batman analogy here is I'm, I'm Robin coming in, you're occupied with the Joker, and I'm going to fight Harley Quinn or something like that. Is that how it's going to work? Okay. Um, yeah, I, I really don't know enough characters in the DC Comics universe. They need to make good movies first. But anyway, moving on. Uh, so what we're going to talk about is how we, uh, how we bring these tools together. So one, one uh, theme you'll hear a lot about when we talk to Sumo Logic, we've been talking about this for a long time, is it's all about efficiency and getting to the root cause faster. I mean, fundamentally, what we're talking about here is customer, customer satisfaction, customer experience, right? Because everything that I would say most of you guys in the audience do and what Sumo Logic tries to provide our customers is a way to keep their customers happy. Because if you take longer to solve a problem, that means people are uh, frustrated for longer, which means you may lose a customer, you may lose some of that stickiness. Now, one thing we talk about sometimes is kind of swivel chair management, which really just means that you're having to look across multiple tools all the time. So typically, this is what you would see, right? You would see, you get some sort of a signal, whatever that is, you're getting that from some sort of, you know, maybe it's uh, performance metrics, maybe it's logs, maybe it's even some sort of latency analysis from traces, but you're getting a signal. And then typically what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to have multiple tools. In this case, you know, maybe it's system performance, uh, you, maybe you're getting that from Sumo, you're looking at uh, you know, CPU performance, memory performance, you're looking at error rates, and then alongside with that, you're trying to figure out if that's related to traces. Maybe some of you guys are even doing that you know, manually through logs, but the point is, that takes a lot of time, and the time you're spending trying to connect those dots is time you're not spending solving problems for your customers at the end here. So, really fundamentally, what the benefit of us working together is that we're bringing this into, you know, into one place. And the great part about you know, Lightstep being an open platform and Sumo Logic being an op open platform, we'll, we'll show more of that in a second, is that that actually wasn't that difficult because uh, it's very easy to pass the data back and forth. So in this case, now instead of looking at you know, one dashboard over here, maybe one screen over here and somewhere else, you're actually looking at a single pane of glass and then branching off at the, to the right places at the right time. It doesn't mean that you're not still looking at those traces in detail, but you're doing that in the context, in the time frame of what else is going on. So you're fundamentally looking at something like this, and we'll, sh we'll show you something real in just a second, but basically you're, you're seeing those traces in the context that you're seeing uh, these signals over here. And, and you know, important thing too, and, uh, you know, and, and Ben, you feel free to jump in here, but one of the things that we were really interested in the way Lightstep approached this is, again, you're not doing the sampling. So, it, we can see those traces, those misperforming traces kind of rise to the surface and see them in here and uh, you know, be able, so you're not, you, you actually have a higher degree of certainty that you're actually seeing the real problems. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I think the issue with tracing conventionally is that usually if you're investigating an operational issue, hopefully anyway, it's not, you're not investigating 
the average case, you're investigating something that's in intrinsically unusual. So if you multiply that unusualness times one for 1,000 sampling, you probably don't have those transactions. It's a bit frustrating to use tracing tools that do upfront sampling to diagnose problems in production. And this uh, integration doesn't suffer from that particular issue. We can capture the outliers with, uh, with, with a guaranteed uh, assembly. Yeah, exactly. And so what I'm going to do first is um, I'm going to walk you through the screens because, uh, you know, we were talking about this before. We got some helpful graphics to show you what we're talking about. So we'll show you what we're going to show you, show it to you, and we'll tell you what we showed you. I think that's like the first to say that. But we'll, we'll show this to you live. Um, and uh, before we do that, you know, here's, here's a you know, vision of what we're actually going to see. So, you know, the first thing you're really going to see here is that, you know, this is this is right off uh, to the start. It's kind of this vision that soon, you know you, you guys saw on stage if you were, um, saw the keynotes. It's about bringing the data together. So you have performance metrics both from within uh, you know Sumo Logic and also ones that have been pulled from Lightstep. So again, that open platform, we're we're extracting data from Lightstep and actually displaying in this dashboard. And so you're seeing error rates, you're seeing transaction statistics metrics, and plus you're actually. Now you're, you're really able to uh, correlate those, right? So that's, that's, the, that's the holy grail here, is that a lot of the time that you may be wasting trying to investigate these problems in real time, right, where your customers are suffering on the, you know, on the other side here, is you're trying to correlate, are these set of errors correlated to these symptoms in my performance metrics? Are those correlated with potential so traces that are actually going through these components in my microservices, right? So now I'm really able to see a clear line of, uh, you know, at least to some degree causation, right? And now over here, we're able to see then, you know, that trace. And this is one of the fun things, again, like a lot of the work we've been doing on the, on the dashboards here is we're actually able to make live links. By the way, this is something you can do yourself. This is actually an um, open piece of the, the search platform now. You can actually create URLs, but we were actually able to take information from that, again, that integration from LightStep and make clickable links back into... Uh, into Lightstep. So now you're going to click on that and you're going to go straight into the interface in Lightstep. So, so again, you're, you're, you're still going to do these deep dives and, you know, and Ben and I were talking about, a little about this before. One of the great parts about this is that as you know, multi-tiered agile teams, the, the, the people responding initially to alerts and seeing these dashboards may not be the ones that are actually going to investigate down to the trace level. That's okay. So the point is they could actually go and see this, but, they, but it's all linked together so that you're, you're seeing this from the same place. And now you're really able to uh, you know, identify those core problems that are going wrong. So again, it's all, about, it's all about efficiency here. So let's switch over and see if we can actually do the live demo. And so now that you guys have actually seen the whole story, this should actually go fairly quickly. Um, and one of the things we've done here while we, is it work? Did he the switch work the right? AV over to the other. Um, Thank you. Uh, the so one of the things we've actually done with our demo environment, um, Frank Reno, who on our team is not here. He probably would have actually been the one up here playing Robin, not me, if he was here. Uh, Frank uh, worked with with Ben and Lightstep to do some of this integration. One of the fun things about our demo environment is that it actually is a real environment. So. Uh, it's actually running on top of Kubernetes. It's uh, got, you know, so basically anytime we spin up a new environment for a, a sales engineer, we actually spin up an entire Kubernetes cluster. And so this means that when we cause problems, we actually break shit for real. It's actually breaking and you can actually see the problems here. So what we're looking at here is a real failure where you can actually see the failure rates increased here. Uh, you can see, you know, elevated latencies, uh, you know, combined with errors, you know, compared to previous times, you know, you're seeing latency over here go up as well. Uh, you know, you're also seeing things going on in the CPU. So you're seeing this all tied together, right? Uh, now, one of the great things here, like I said, this is actually, these are live clickable links. So if you're looking in here, we actually can say, okay, here I have, you know, a really, you know, anomalous uh, transaction going on. I click on that. It actually launches into Lightstep. Now I'm seeing this live and I can actually kick around. So the the, the, again, the whole point here is, is that that's probably the dashboard that you have linked, say, let's say you have a real-time alert. It's alerting on you know, some sort of a transaction issue. Maybe it's alerting on uh, performance problems. You link that. You link it to the dashboard. You, know, you can do that through the real-time alerts. You link it to the dashboard. You see there. You see the problem, and you click right in the light step. 
hopefully that's saving you a significant amount of time, meantime to repair, because you can actually get the system back up, you know, again more quickly. Anything you want to add there? Um, I think that's really effective demonstration. I think in some ways the whole point is that it seems fairly obvious. It's like, yeah, of course that's what you'd want. You want to see the problem and then click on something and understand it. Uh, that's actually very, very difficult to achieve. It's, it's something that I'm not aware of other ways to do that right now. With a general purpose platform like Sumo, coupled with LightSteps technology to do this sort of assembly retroactively, this is a very obvious workflow that I don't think is otherwise available really anywhere, which is exciting. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you can flip back to the, uh, the regular graphics bin. Um, so, and, you know, and again, kind of emphasizing this is part of our commitment as Sumo Logic and when we're building a platform is to not only make it easier to, you know, integrate with cool new technology like LightStep, it's also to make it easier for you to kind of build these custom integrations yourself by making these kind of, uh, you know, because again, this is all stuff that you can do a lot of it yourself. Now, one of the things I was going to uh, say as well, uh, we, we, we actually, I forgot to put the link in the presentation. I'm happy to give it to you later, but we actually have the integration uh, with LightStep on uh, GitHub, if I remember correctly, uh, that Frank Reno put together. So that is available as of earlier this week on Monday. So go take a look at that, and you can actually, set, again, set that up yourself. This is all about making it easy for you to do this. So uh, to wrap up, I'll let Batman take it back over here. <laughs> go for it. I don't know about this analogy. It's more like one of those superhero <laughs> movies. We can both be superheroes. I don't know if I really want to be Batman, though. That's too I weird. would say I wouldn't want to be Aquaman, but he's got, his movie looks pretty cool. So <laughs> me, I don't know. I think I'll change my mind. Yeah, so... I mean, obviously, the reason that we want to do this partnership is that we want to deliver value. The main reason why people are excited about this uh, out in, you know, in the realm of enterprises that are running real systems, that they want to reduce the, the time it takes to get uh, to understanding or remediation for um, issues that are affecting production. This integration is incredibly valuable in that regard, especially if you're a Sumo customer already. Um, microservices are super valuable. There's lots of reasons to do them, but if you don't have a plan in place, while you are starting that, prog that, pro that process and that journey, you're going to be in a world of pain. I've seen it many times. In some ways, um, I, I think of, uh, of uh, the organizations that are thinking about observability after the migration are in a really uh, dangerous place, I think. Uh, you need to have this as a, gro a going concern as soon as you start that move. Um, traces are super important and necessary, but if you don't see the right traces at the right time, they're not that useful. Um, I think there are a lot of people who think tracing is really interesting and deploy it uh, naively and end up being disappointed that it's only used for steady state performance analysis, which is not that helpful. To get it to actually be useful for operational use cases, you have to be integrated into workflows like the Sumo dashboard um, and be able to assemble traces on demand. And um, uh, this integration with Sumo and LightStep is actually uh, it, delivering what seems like a very natural workflow that I don't think can be found anywhere else right now, period. Um, and it's very exciting to us and to Sumo. So I yeah. hope this is helpful. Feel free to approach us afterwards. We'd love to talk about it. Uh, and I think we also know. have some time for questions oh, yeah. and answers. So we're CEO's got the mic over there. So if any of you guys are brave enough to actually ask a question now, she can pass the mic or we can... Just raise your hand and I'll bring the mic over to you guys. Has this been too much to absorb? <laughs> it's okay, I'm tired. We gotta too. take her, we gotta take her. So I guess part of it's my, um, I don't have a good understanding yet of LightStep um, and how it plays in the microservice because I find it interesting um, as a company we're talking about microservices a lot and how to tie them up um, and really link them together. So if you could explain a little bit more how LightStep does that, um, or maybe I can stop by after hours. Oh, no, I'm happy to address that. Uh, so LightStep, uh, if I, just to paraphrase the question to make sure I've got it right, you're essentially saying, OK, you have a sense of what the end product looks like. How do you integrate? Yeah. yeah. So LightStep is really I'll put your committed. diagram up, by the way. Oh, cool. Um, uh, LightStep's pretty committed to interoperability, um, both uh, from data portability, which is what made this, this demo is cool, but actually uh, is like a very real thing using public APIs. Uh, that's on the data side. On the, on the instrumentation integration side, we're even more committed to that. I actually personally started the Open Tracing Project, which is an open source standard for instrumentation. And the beauty of that is that if you're using software that already has open tracing support, um, you don't need to 
do anything. It's, it can be baked in via those existing integrations and any instrumentation you would add in order to um, annotate business logic with tags that are from your application, that sort of stuff, that's all totally portable. Um, Lightstep's biggest competitors also support open tracing and I'm totally happy about that. The idea is we don't want to lock anyone in to integration with Lightstep at either the data la layer or at the instrumentation layer and open tracing is the preferred way to do it. That said, Lightstep is pretty omnivorous and so if there's um, a data format that you already use or uh, you know, if you're already using Zipkin or Jaeger or X-Ray or some sort of in-house um, correlated uh, event uh, monitoring system, we can usually ingest that data very easily into the satellites as well. So we're pretty agnostic about data, but I think the best thing to do as an, enter as an enterprise, and this is independent of deciding on using Lightstep, is to choose an open, standard, portable instrumentation system, whatever it is. I don't think that black box agents in the traditional APM sense of like New Relic and AppDynamics, I do not think that works in microservices. There are numerous Gartner reports and Forrester reports that, that underline that. It's not just my opinion. Those things, they cause overhead and they don't correctly capture transactions, so you do need some sort of explicit instrumentation. Hopefully you do it in a standard way where you don't need to write it yourself, but that's the general pitch about how to do it. Does that, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, and one thing I would, I would say too, when I was uh, kind of prepping for this and talking to Frank who did the integration, the great part is if you have a platform that you're already building your application on, he was actually able to do this pretty rapidly because the, there was already you know, integrations with open tracing for the platform, so that's <clears throat> Excuse me. That's that was key, and then he did a couple other, you know, instrumentation layers to pull in extra bits of information that he wanted. But the basic integration itself was, you know, fairly straightforward. Because I think, you know, open tracing in particular and tracing has come a long way in the last few years. Just having a lot of different integrations out there that you can, you're very likely to find something that you'll be able to use for your own platform, which is great. Yeah. Other questions? <coughs> Excuse me. All right, well, um, you, you guys feel free to come up and uh, you know, talk to uh, you know, Any Ben, Ben, Any even ben. the other Ben. I don't Any know, ben. He knows a lot about cool audio tech, too. Um, but uh, feel free to come up to us later. And, like the, the light step, you know, it literally is right back there. Go back and talk to these guys. And um, thanks for your time. And by the way, since I've got you as a captive audience and I haven't got to do this yet, we're, we're giving away free headphones with the Masters of Data podcast. And I need more people, so there's you know less chance the other people are going to get one. No, but uh, you go over there and uh, and register. We're going to be giving away. If I get enough people, I'll even give away more than one. So go register. It's really easy. Come check it out. Thanks, guys. Thank you. <laughs>